channel it's Trudy little miracle where i talk about my disability i have general anxiety disorder gad or gad everybody has anxiety it's a completely normal thing you know you might be anxious over an upcoming interview or an upcoming test uh, but for me i feel that feeling all the time there is a book called the DSM. It's where doctors and professionals use to properly diagnose people with psychiatric issues. And in that DSM, they have a long list of symptoms and somebody who might be an, uh, have an anxiety disorder has to experience several of those symptoms. <laughs> I have panic attacks, uh, like a pseudo paralysis, adrenaline headaches, and depression. <laughs> yes, and that's only a few of them that I could just think off the top of my head. <laughs> depression, it does feel like everybody has it right now. Unfortunately, because of the misuse of the word, it really kind of adds on to that stigma. Depression is much more than sadness. Depression is, I don't know, for me, it's not even, I don't even experience sadness. In fact, I either am bored or I don't feel any feelings at all. <laughs> I guess in a way, if I'm bored, you know, when you're like sitting in class and you'd rather be playing video games or watching TV. Whereas when I'm bored, I there's absolutely nothing I want to do. I'm completely unmotivated. I just have like no general desire to do anything. <laughs> I mean, it kind of depends if this is just a one day occurrence or if it's a consistent um, problem. However, I can't fully understand it but depression is kind of broken down to different levels. So because I've experienced mine on and off for many years, I would be labeled a different kind of stage of depression than someone who, like let's say a family member has died and they're feeling depressed maybe for months or a couple of years. But in general, you know, if you are feeling that way or any way that I'm explaining, it's definitely an option to talk to your doctor. They are all very well qualified to handle this issue. And if they don't feel comfortable with it, they will suggest you to and refer you to somebody else that can help you. I have to give the lame answer and say my parents. And it's not just them, it's the mixture of past trauma and genetic makeup for me. I mean, I can't really fully answer that because even I don't know. <laughs> Believe me, if I could, I would. I started taking medicine and even the medicine isn't like a instant fix. You know, it takes time to start working in your system as well as finding the right medication in general. And then on top of that, I have been going to therapy and that has been a big part of helping me rewire my brain. <laughs> when I say rewiring my brain, I'm talking about my thought processes. My thought processes are the things that kind of reinforce that disorder and depression. And a lot of it is like, like from my childhood, how I was taught, going through that and relearning a different and healthier way to think. It's kind of like learning a new language, but way harder. <laughs> I don't necessarily like the term cured. I don't think it accurately describes, but in essence, kind of when I started the process and was diagnosed and started the process of therapy. I 
thought that this would forever be my life. And so the fact of that I sit here today and say that I do have hope and I do work toward the goal of this not being an issue for me every day and not being like that big of a deal is a big accomplishment for me. Ha 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 